Welcome to another Saturday night and taking it to the nub. I'm your host, Boston Jimmy. And tonight, we're going to take a little journey down to Veracruz, Mexico with Casa 1910 Cigars. And we're going to talk about cigars. We're going to talk about tequila. And you know what? I'm going to mix up some margaritas, too, which I'm ready to rock and roll with. Now, my guest is not ready yet. Um, he hasn't chimed in. So we're going to kind of start the show. Um, might have somebody come on in, in the interim. We'll just talk about tequila and other good stuff. And then when uh, our guest shows, we'll, we'll follow through with the show. And how this goes, sometimes people get locked up and travel or whatever. We have to adjust as we go along. Um, I would like to say that uh, today's show is uh, proudly brought to you by All Saints Cigars. All Saints Cigars was founded in, in 2019 by industry veteran Mickey Pegg. Mickey and his two friends, Martin Corboy, and a, a successful restaurateur, and Frank Leo, an Air Force Academy graduate military veteran, formed the company. And as Mickey explains, they were sitting down talking and smoking cigars, and they finally decided that they would do this together. It was time. They decided if they're going to do hard work, it should be for something they love. And besides, a tough day with a cigar is better than a great day doing anything else. Soon after, they began the process of launching All Saints Cigars and jokingly referring to themselves as the Holy Trinity, St. Michael, St. Martin, and St. Francis. They chose for the logo the cross of St. James, the patron saint of Nicaragua, the country where their cigars would be produced. You can check out All Saints Cigars at www.allsaintscigars.com. So let me uh, drop right into the show here, and uh, we'll see if I can uh, see if I uh, get a guest to join. But meanwhile, um, today we're actually going to be talking about a company. It's a relatively new company called Casa 1910, and they're based out of Veracruz, Mexico, and um, they've been around for a few years, and they've got some interesting blends. I, I recently reviewed this one, which is the um, Cuchillo. Um, this is a very nice kind of mild medium blend. It was an excellent cigar as far as I was concerned, a good morning cigar, actually. Um, today, I'm going to be checking out their Lucero, all right? So um, this is the one I want to fire up now, and I'm going to pour myself a little more of this homemade margarita, which when we get uh, Manuelo on, he's going to explain a little more about tequila because he's from Mexico. He understands it better than most of us, but I think I made this right here. I probably uh, should just be sipping this and we will sip a little later, but this is a Maestro Dobal Diamante. All right, there's an agave. So that's what's in my uh, margarita today. I'll put it right here. There's my margarita. Mm -mm. I do make good margaritas. That's all I can say. Homemade. Everything properly mixed. And we'll just fire this up right here as we wait and see if anybody comes in and joins us. Now, um, I met Casa 1910. Um, I connected with them online. And I actually met them most recently at uh, TPE uh, in Vegas early in the year. Um, I promised them that not only would I review their cigars, but I'd stop by their booth. And they had a nice booth. They had their own booth. 
they were presenting a lot of good information about about their company. Um, I, I I find what they're doing is a uh, very decent craft. Um, I I I don't want to steal their their, their storm. I, I I want Manello to tell his story, so I'm kind of just filling in right now. Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, I introduced early uh, Casa 1910, new brand based out of Veracruz, Mexico. Um, talk to me a little bit about your brand and how you got started. And then we're going to roll into some other cool stuff because I want to talk tequila with you too. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Um, I'm Manuel Santiago, the, the blender for Casa 1910 and co-founder for Casa 1910. And our, our first days uh, in Casa 1910, um, it's uh, a few years ago, because uh, for us, it's very important to make a lot of <clears throat> good, good tobaccos for you and, and make a great, great balance between different uh, um, several elements, like a good looking in the packaging, good, good history be behind every cigar, but most important, the quality of the tobaccos inside. <clears throat> it's because we work a, a lot in the, in the farms, in the factories, with the cigar rollers uh, <clears throat> to, eight years ago to, to nine years ago, but we released the brand in 2021 in PCA with one cigar, the Cuchillo Parado. Um, the, the way for, for, for make this kind of, of release or this kind of show for us is because the, the Cuchillo Parado is the name for the fierce battle in the Mexican Revolution. And we take the name for the first battle, for our battle, our first battle, um, and we call it for our first cigar, the Cuchillo Parado, uh, because we need to make a very special revolution around the Mexican tobacco. Uh, because because um, the Mexican tobacco is with very great quality, with the very great flavors and aromas. But everybody takes the wrappers, the binders, but not too much the fillers. Um, and we in Mexico we don't have the the kind of brands of a uh, hundred Mexican, and it, it, it becomes Casa 1910. Uh, we look into to make a lot of noise around Mexico, around our heritage and around the quality from Mexican tobacco. We had a lot of inspiration for other brands uh, from Torrent Family, for example, is, is the best example for us, uh, for our inspiration, the Casa Torrent Family, the Te Amos, Cigars, and other big, big uh, Mexican brands. Uh, Storm One in its... Uh, sell today today selling tobaccos or maybe raw material but no more cigars or maybe they make cigars but maybe a, a little bit locally and it, it's because we need to share with all around the world the mexican heritage the mexican quality in tobaccos and the mexican luxury um, and it's is the, the basis for, for Casa 1910. So many, many years ago. So I've been, I've been smoking cigars since 1977. So if that puts everybody in perspective. Um, and I remember about in, in the early 80s, in the early 1980s, I had a friend of mine that um, had went on a vacation to Mexico. He wasn't a cigar smoker, but he um, he knew I was. And he came back. It was a, it was a work colleague. 
And he came back and he brought me a box of cigars, Mexican cigars, not like, you know, he didn't come home with like, you know, oh, I got these Cohibas or this, you know, you know what, or Monte Cristo. He didn't come back with like Cuban cigars. He came back with authentic Mexican cigars and they were dark, oscuro cigars. They were rock solid. Okay. You know, I mean, they, and, and they were spicy like a jalapeno pepper kind of pepperiness to it <laughs> i was like and it's the first time i ever smoked something <clears throat> that insane and i was like what am i smoking what is this i couldn't get my head wrapped around it now over the years obviously we have come to love mexican san andreas tobacco um, you know, curing it properly, <clears throat> venting it properly. That that same experience when I look at the San Andreas today, right? I don't know what I had then. I don't know if it was San Andreas tobacco. Maybe, probably was. Perhaps back to forty years ago, but it's come a long way. Mexican tobacco, not only the the the, the harvesting. And the curing, but the actual growing and everything. So talk to me about the agricultural changes that have happened in the tobacco leaf in Mexico over those decades. Sure. Well, <clears throat> in Mexico, we have a lot of history around the growing tobacco. Uh, since since the Spaniards took the Cuba for growing tobacco and DR, IT, and sugarcane and other stuff. In Veracruz, mostly part in, in Orizaba, they grow in tobacco. They grow in a, a lot of tobacco. And <clears throat> the 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 farmers it take the different way to growing tobacco and go to the valley of San Andres Veracruz. And a lot of time that people make a lot of changes in the in the in the curings and fermentation process and take a lot of a lot of a lot of knowledge from from the Cuban people because in that time a lot of Cubans come to Mexico to make a, a to make a great growing tobacco, and in that time make a lot of cigars. And actually, in Mexico City, uh, we have the old building for the National Cigar Factory, but now it's a library. But in that time, it's very important uh, industry in Mexico. And, uh, and right now, um, the two most important places to grow in tobacco, it's in uh, Nayarit, Veracruz, Nayarit and Veracruz, and Veracruz. Nayarit uh, growing more uh, blonde tobacco from cigarillos or cigarettes, and Veracruz, Mexico, right now, the most important industry in Mexico, San Andres, 80% it's growing raw material for selling grappers, binders for other countries like uh, Nicaragua, uh, DR, Honduras. And, and, and the proper factories for cigars, premium cigars, in decrease, is decreased with the, with, with the past of the years. Um, because the, the most important uh, business is selling the raw uh, selling the raw material, and the big companies like uh, Torrent, for example, sells a lot of very good raw material and keeps a little bit of tobacco and make our proper beautiful cigars. Uh, us, for example. We just produce tobacco for all proper uh, production, and we don't sell anything because uh, it's no efficiency. It's no efficiency at, at all for our production and selling tobacco. We can we we can make this kind of, of business. 
we, we need to make good cigars with our proper tobacco. And right now, uh, around the old project for Casa 1910, I work a lot in the fermentation process and the curing, and the curing barn and the aging process. I, I change a little bit the regular process in Mexico to, to make these things or to make this, this process. Uh, because uh, they are very traditional in Veracruz, the, the producers are very traditional and <clears throat> I need to make better tobaccos with uh, better flavors and uh, um, better burning and better aromas. It's because we need to make quality process in fermentation, curing barn and aging. And it's a lot of changes around the time, a lot of changes. So how, <laughs> how, did, your, how did your journey start? Okay, so you created this company a couple of years ago. Where did your journey start? Did you work in factories? Did you work in fields? Um, how did you get from where you were younger to where you are today? in creating Casa 1910? Hmm. Hmm. Well, um, it's very funny because I'm attorney, but I prefer- Thought is an attorney. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, 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 I take uh, the course or the highway to be happy and share the happiness from the spirits and cigars. And when, when I take the proper university and I study law, I work in, in a bar on the weekends. And I completely, completely, I, I fall in love in the spirits area, in the mixologies area. And I take a, a lot of certification around the, um, the spirits and around the mixology cocktails and, and, and tastings. But when I study proper certification in, in red wine sommelier, one of my teachers gave me a, a cigar, a Cuban cigar actually. And when I tasted, I could like properly with, with the guide for, for my teacher, definitely. I fell in love about tobacco, and they told uh, he told me if you like the flavor of the tobacco and if you like to know more around the tobacco, you need to go to learn to take the the, the knowledge from the source. You need to go to the roots. You need to go to Cuba. You need to go to Nicaragua, DR, Honduras, and of course Mexico. And it is because 16 years ago. I go to Cuba to, to know, to take another, another tourist visit. Um, it's more like a, I'm going to the farms to talk with the, with the farmers, to talk with the bagueros. And this, this part of my life, it's very important because I, I learned a, a, a lot, not just for, for tobaccos, uh, for life, for Cuban rum, for the people in Cuba, for the farmers, the way to take the, to, uh, the way to take the farmers a lot of love and put in the, in the plants and put in the, in the soils. And definitely I, I fell in love and, and I dedicate a, a lot of uh, years of my life to go to Nicaragua to check the factories to know the farmers to and and they are too and i work in, in a lot of hotels uh, around the bar area and a lot of restaurants in the bar area and i take different certification around that uh, actually i work with with the tequila companies and rum companies and in one specific day Abanos, Abanos called me and in, in, invited me to work with, with Abanos in the marketing area and the development of, of new products and, and other stuff. 
And I take, I take the chance for put my love in a, for working, you know, for put all, all knowledge around and, and I my love in the flavors, in the aromas, but mostly in the experience in the experience for the customer, for the final customer. And because I love the, when, when I give uh, somebody a, a cigar, I need to see the reaction. I need to see the, the looking, the face, the all reaction and all experience. I, I love this part of, of my job. And, I take all opportunities to, to increase my knowledge around the tobaccos and around the experience with pairings, with other kind of stuff. And I took part in, in several, uh, for example, in, in the, the, the development so for a few cigars from Cuba, from regional editions from Mexico and other products. And, in that time, I take the chance for go to Veracruz and, and make a lot of experiments with different farmers, with different uh, factories. And I take a little bit of knowledge and tobaccos and, and other stuff around that. And in one specific day, Serge and Jamie invite me to make a, a special pairing with the Swiss community in Mexico City. Uh, all Swiss guys living in Mexico, and I, I talk with, with these guys, and, and I talk around the Cuban tobacco and the pairing with drums, and we make a, a beautiful experience, and Jamie uh, come with me, and talk, we, talk a, a, we talk a, a lot of time around the Mexican tobacco, the possibilities around the, the Mexican tobacco, and <clears throat> For but, but well, we work so, around the, the, the possibilities of, of the brand, and right now we are here. <laughs> and yeah, and, and I have to say that you know, so yeah. the, the I, I reviewed this one, okay. This is the first one that 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 I that I looked at, which is the uh Cuchillo Parado. Cuchillo, yeah. So the very, very, very nice cigar. Enjoyed it. Um, tonight I, I fired up earlier and I'm still smoking through the, uh, the Lucera. The Lucero. Okay. Lucero. Lucero, you say Lucero. Okay. So this, this cigar is uniquely different than, than this one. So kudos to you. Um, at this stage, I mean, I was getting, you know, there was some good spicy and peppery notes and earthy notes. But right here, where I'm at, and why is my thing blurry? I wish it would. <laughs> I kind of got a blurry freaking screen. But this right now is um, getting very savory. What is giving me my savory notes in this? Because this is getting very savory. It's getting, <clears throat> as I would describe, it's starting to get umami notes in it. Okay. What is causing that? in this at this point well uh actually lucero <clears throat> it's my favorite one for cover edition cover edition is a the green leveling in the, in the second ring or yes. the second level is a, is a green one and <clears throat> lucero right now it's my favorite for for cover edition cover edition it's uh, our second release, <clears throat> and actually we released this this line in 2022 in TPE with three cigars made in Esteli, Nicaragua, with a very special blend between Mexican tobaccos and uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos. But the Lucero, uh, it's a torpedo for six for, for length and 54 for ring gauge. Beautiful torpedo, a uh, Habano color for the wrapper, Negro San Andres on the binder, and four different types of tobacco inside from Jalapa, Ometepe, and Esteli. So, for me, the most important part around the, the tobaccos, around the cigars, 
is the fermentation. It's a correct fermentation. I talk around the fermentation because the aging, it's a long fermentation, okay? It's fermentation. So <clears throat> that kind of, of format and that cigar, it's very elegant and it's very evolutive because the, the shape, the, the torpedo shape. Um, it's beautiful because in the, in the first part, you can feel the flavor, the spiciness the, uh, for, for the Nicaraguan tobacco. And the second part, you can feel the, evolu the evolution for, with uh, Mexican tobacco. Yeah. And, and the sweetness and the sweetness for the Habana Ecuador, the wrapper in the, in the leaves and the aroma for, for the wrapper. But the, the binder makes a good balance with the Nicaraguan tobaccos because the Nicaraguan tobaccos, it's a little bit bitter and, and spicy and toasted and mineral, but the, the part of the, of the Mexican tobacco, the, the Negro San Andres, give to that blend sweetness and other kind of spices. If you taste the, the, the black pepper for the Nicaraguan tobaccos, you can feel the, the cinnamon or little touch of vanilla from the Mexican tobaccos and a, a beautiful aftertaste for uh, cacao beans and coffee beans and very, um, a, a finish for the all experience in the palate, a little touch of leather. And it's, it's very, very interesting, the evolution that gains this kind of cigar and you can feel all flavors and aromas, very frank, very honest in the second tier. And the last tier, you can feel flavors, aromas, and the strength, the, the, real, the real strength for this kind of cigar. Uh, because our, our way to, to make the proper cigar or our way to rolling cigars is very similar from Cuba. The, 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 the same way to put the veins in the kind of, of way, the rolling in, in cubes is the same way. And if, if you can feel the draw, it's a little bit tight because um, in this cigar, for example, the La Coronela, maybe <clears throat> the proper weight if you produce this kind of, of cigar, 58 or ring gauge and five and a half inch for length, <laughs> maybe the proper weight is between 20 for 21 grams, but I put uh, maybe one and a half gram or two grams more for tobacco because it's better if you smoke more, more slowly the cigar. Because yes. you give, you give a, a cigar the time for the for the take the proper evolution and the and the proper temperature in the tobacco. It, it, it's because you, you can feel this kind of sensation in, in the in the lucero. How how long how long does it so you bring up a good point? Smoking cigars slowly. How long does it take you to say to smoke a robusto? What's your average time on a Robusto? For me, I, I'm yeah. very slowly a smoker, and I take maybe 45 to 50 minutes to oh, smoke I a do, Robusto. I do an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's very slow. I, 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 learned, I learned from uh, – I, I was actually came in number two in the United States in the uh, – smoking the world championship smoking competition which Great. is smoking the cigar who could smoke the cigar the longest and i smoked the corona it took me two hours and 10 minutes to smoke that corona and i learned i i i i was told years ago i smoked too fast so i slowed it down and then when i did that competition i realized because you're trying to get the most time you slow it down. You can't let it go out. Can't go out. You go out, you lose the competition. 
So you can't, <laughs> it can't, it can't extinguish. So you puff gently and the flavors that you get, the long, the, the slower you smoke it and keep it lit. You never want to have to touch that flame to the cigar again, right? Just let it burn, let it take its natural course. And the flavors were just elevated because you're not scorching tobacco. You're not forcing it yes. to do what it's what 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 it shouldn't be doing. Yes, so let's uh, yeah. yes. Sorry. All right. So 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 let's let, let's talk about tequila. So uh, when when I look at your site, okay, and if you uh, if you guys that are watching, everybody's watching. You got to go out to Casa 1910 Cigars, go to their site. Um, and one of the things they do talk about is tequila. So I, I did want to talk tequila with you because, I, you know, I am not a tequila connoisseur. I'm a, I'm usually a scotch guy, right? Um, but I do enjoy my tequilas. My daughter, who I'm staying with this weekend here, um, she loves her tequilas. So let me, let me bring out a couple of tequilas. So I was talking earlier about it. So this one, you familiar with Mayorazgo. this one? Yeah, it's Mayorazgo. All course. right, talk to me about this tequila. What is this? Te- what should I be tasting in this tequila? <clears throat> Whoa. I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to pour a little in here and talk me through what I'm tasting in this tequila. Uh, oh. This is a silver one. It's got a very aroma. beautiful aroma. It's got a really nice aroma. Is, is the blue and white label? It's the blue and white label. Okay. Uh, well, um, this is a, the silver or we call mm-hmm. it blanco, blanco tequila. Uh, <clears throat> the the blanco tequila <clears throat> is our tequila. Uh, they took the pineapple agave plant and put in the oven for uh, some several hours to release the sugars for the for the process of fermentation. Okay, and when they distill it, the the fermentation stuff take the spirit and put some uh, filters and make a balance with the with water okay um for me if, if you taste tequila or if, if you need to know a mexican brand of tequila the best way to know very well in the well way you need to buy the blanco because it's the is the is the reflection is the soul for the for the factory and okay so the, like the, the blanco this, tequila is in the are the are the soul of the tequila. Exactly. Um, you can feel first of all in Mayorazgo the sweetness and a little bit the smokiness for the agave plant, the, the coke and agave uh, pineapple. And um, but in, in the middle of the experience, maybe you can feel some minerals and nerves and a little uh, mean sensations and fresh sensations and the alcohol it's maybe between 38 percent um but it's no harsh in, in the mouth yeah it's, it's very, very smooth this is very very, very smooth. smooth yes but for me <clears throat> i prefer to make a good pairing between tequila and cigar, if you put a proper reposado tequila, young or joven tequila, uh, añejo or extra añejo. Why? Because the blancos uh, takes a, a, a lot of minerality, a lot, a lot and a lot of fresh, freshness. Um, the sensation for alcoholic part, it's very important and may, maybe make a cross between the tobaccos and the tequilas. But if you take a reposado or, or one tequila with barrel, you make a great bridge between the, the tobacco and the tequila. Why? 
for, for the tannins, for the tannins for the barrel, you, you put a lot of sensation, sweetness sensations, the tannins, and it's a very great bridge between tequila and, and cigar. I'm from Jalisco. I'm, I'm born and raised in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Um, Jalisco is the land of tequila and mariachi, right? And when, when I'm, I am a child, uh, my family, it's very regular in the, in the Jalisco families. Maybe if you're a child, you can taste a little bit of, uh, a little sip of, of tequila. It's, it's totally normal. Uh -huh. Between the meat, milkshake and, and a sip of tequila. <laughs> it's very normal, okay? And uh, it's it because uh, I'm very familiar with the, with the tequila sensation and, and I take a, a several certification around the tequila and, and um, when, when I make Cuchillo Parado and the Tierra Blanca, the two cigars from Revolutionary Edition, I make and I design it, these two cigars for perfect pairing with tequila. Cuchillo Parado, for example, it's the, the best way to make a good pairing with reposados and añejos tequilas. And I recommend put a reposado tequila in the first part of the cigar and put añejo tequila in the last part of the cigar. Ah, okay. So let me ask you about this one. So this is another one that I've been testing. So. Dovel. Claro. What is this? So talk to me about this. Thing. Now this tequila I felt didn't have the same aromas as the previous one all right it seemed to be a little more muted on the aroma and also on the taste great well uh double double diamante it's a reposado cristalino tequila okay it's a, a new um it's a new way to make tequila a proper certification for for the consejo regulador de tequila the council for, for the regulation for, for tequila. And it's made with the, the, the producer take the barrels from tequila and put the, the tequila, the spirit, in a special filter with charcoal. And after that, put this kind of tequila in a Triple new Ds and bring it to another. filter. Okay. And they take the flavors, the aromas, the tannins, and the col color for, for the añejos or, or reposados tequila. To, for the result for that, it's make a more smooth, creamy, oily tequilas. And it's, it's like a blanco, and but not too hard. Yeah. More s s smooth, more gentle, and more vanilla flavors and cooked flavors for the pineapple. And for, and, for the and and you bring up, you know, you, you mentioned you mentioned the oily, and and it's funny you say that because now that you say it and I'm tasting it, I understand what you're saying. So that's an interesting yeah. description. Is it is it, not flavor for oil. It's the sensation. The yes, heavy, it coats the, it coats the palate. Coats the palate. Right. Exactly. Fabulous. Now, the last one, the last one, obviously, everybody. So those other ones, people that don't know tequila may not be familiar with, but I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. <laughs> Patron. Right. Patron. So Padron is what people like go for. You're going to go for a, a little more expensive tequila. They go for Patron. So how do you compare the Patron to those last two? Well, every bottle, every, every, every producer and every, and every tequila is totally different in front of the, all, all other tequilas. Um, Mayorazgo, for example, it's a good option for make a maybe great cocktails like a good margaritas great, and margaritas and another kind of cocktails with juice 
or something, or, or maybe I love this tequila with a couple of, of ice balls and a peel of the, of the orange, okay? It's very refreshing. It's very great. And I love this tequila in, on the rocks with the, with the orange peel. If you eat maybe a ceviche, for example, it's very great, or maybe a shrimp cocktail. It's refreshing, grateful, smooth, and very sweet. But uh, the Dobel, it's like a very great option for the entrance for the tequila world. If you taste in other time tequila and you don't like it, you need to try the Cristalino, the Dobel Diamante. It's a very great option to make a great entrance for, for the tequila stuff. So the Patron, uh, the silver one, it's more for, for cocktails, for long drinks, but maybe not for cigars. Uh, okay. Again, you, you need a reposado, añejos, or extra añejos, or young tequilas or joven tequila to make a good bridge between the tequilas and, and the spirits. Uh, Patron for me, it's very important in the industry tequila because they put the name of the tequila in other level in US. Yes. In other, in other countries. <clears throat> and it is the, is the perfect, perfect, perfect uh, example how to make this, the things in the tequila business. Great presentation, great history, um, and a great quality for, for the tequilas. And they maintain their, the quality right now, and they in, develop a new products like a Roca Patron, Patron. It's very great tequila. Actually, I, I love this Roca Patron for cocktails, or maybe the coffee liqueur from Patron. It's very great. Maybe you can try the, the espresso martini yes i've vodka, had that yes but with no vodka you can try with tequila reposado uh, li coffee liqueur from patron espresso you shake it and pour in in the martini glass and it's very great option for for make a, a great pairing for medium strength cigars it's very great yeah, yeah i imagine it would be yes absolutely so um, let's talk a little bit about um, you, Manalo, the man. Okay, how long have you been uh, grooming that mustache of yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it's it's funny, but but. I, I'm my, my beginning for the mustache and, and the beard is because I'm so lazy for <laughs> savvy, okay? And it, it, it's because I live in the, the mustache and I live in the, the beard. Um, in, in one day, my, my barber shop, my barber says me, why do you put a very intense mustache with a little wax in the in the in the in the extremes, and it's very interesting because you you make experience, you talk with people, you are like a character, and <laughs> and it, it's great for you. You don't need to to stabbing, and maybe when you come to the, to the barber shop, I, I cut the the parts. And no worries, no worries. You you can live there, and you be happy with the, with the mustache. And and right now, the only stuff I hate is when when I burn my mustache with with a with oh. a mustache. <laughs> or, or or maybe a very short cigar. Uh, some days and sometimes I I burn a little bit uh, my mustache, <laughs> but. Or maybe a, a little bit for for the the bird, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, yes, uh, yes. When it, I, when it, when it smells funny, <laughs> I burn my mustache. <laughs> I I've done that. Trust me. I've I've I like you know. Yeah, yeah. I know that smell of burning hair. It's it's a, it's not a good smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me uh, 
I already took a break earlier, but since we're kind of redoing the show, let me um let me take a quick um quick commercial break here. Let me just give a shout out to the sponsors once again. And um we'll come back and we'll talk more about um uh Manalo and um who you are and where your experiences are. So um sure. let me just uh reset this. Just do this and a little shout out here. And today's show is brought to you by Casa Cuevas Cigars. In the 19th century, Juan Cuevas, a Spanish immigrant from Santanda, began what was to be a family business which now spans four generations. Like others, fortunate enough to live and work in Pinar del Rio province of Cuba, Juan commenced cultivating tobacco, turning it into a successful business. Following in his father's footsteps, his son Juan Jr. continued with the family business, successfully expanding it until events which took place in 1959 forced a dramatic change. Years later, in the Siabo Valley, of the Dominican Republic, Luis Cuevas Sr., Juan Jr.'s son, carried on the family tradition of handcrafting fine cigars in the family's cigar factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas. Today, Luis Sr. is joined by his son, Luis Jr., in the manufacturing and sale of premium long filler cigars at their factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas, in Santiago, Dominican Republic. So check out Casa Cuevas Cigars at www.casacuevascigars.com and on their Instagram and Facebook channels. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate, what could be a better passion project? We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full-bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. Before you light your next cigar, be sure to check out Cigar Medics, the makers of the patent-approved humidimeter. The humidimeter is a tool designed to display the relative humidity inside your cigar. With this device, there's no more guessing. Simply insert the probes into the foot or cap of your cigar, and you can instantly know if your cigar is ready to be smoked. Buy now on CigarMedics.com and see site for other cigar accessories. With the humidimeter, you'll know when to hold them and know when to smoke them. And today's show is brought to you by Bocock Brothers Cigars, a new and active brand founded by two Honduran brothers, Bryant and Douglas Bocock. The brand zeroes in on those folks that are looking for easy-to-smoke cigars inspired by unusual circumstances. Very importantly named after their very interesting and imitable last name, Bocock. Right now, Bocock Brothers is featuring their signature edition made at the A.J. Fernandez factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. It features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Nicaraguan Habano binder, and a Nicaraguan filler, available in three popular formats, a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. You can check out Bocock Brothers Cigars at www.bocockbrothers.com. And today's show is brought to you by Platinum Nova Cigars. Platinum Nova is a family-owned and operated premium cigar company. Only the highest vintage tobacco and the most skilled hand workmanship go into the making of each Platinum Nova cigar. 
This results in a timeless blend of art and craftsmanship. The Nova brand and the family's work are a tribute and an honor to their grandfather to always remember him and his infinite passion for the finest cigars. Their love for cigars started with their grandfather, a dedicated master blender and entrepreneur in the cigar industry. So the next time you're looking for that exquisite cigar experience, pick up a Platinum Nova. You could check them out at Platinum Nova Cigars, www.novacigar.com, and on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. All right. I'd like to always thank my sponsors. Without them, this show's a little harder to do. Thank you. You got two shout outs tonight because we've been running for two hours. Um, we're going to go back to Manalo. Um, so uh, you had a really good show at TPE, I saw. You had a really good presence at your booth. Um, it looked like you guys were uh, driving some traffic. How did uh, how, how'd the show go for you? Very well, actually. Thank you. Um, because um, in every treasure for us is the time, the perfect time to make a good connections between uh, new new customers, new uh, possible customers, and say hi to the oldest ones. And it, it's very great for us to say hi to share tequila to share cigars and to share mariachi with with all people in tp because this is a class of 1910 dna the mariachi is the tequilas for of course mexico and and the cigars and this tp 2023 is very special for us because we released the new line the third one the soldadera edition um Right now, we, we show you the, uh, for all attendees three new cigars in one line, the white label. Actually, I'm smoking the Coronela or La Coronela. Uh, Soldadera mm, makes a good impression for, for, the, for, for the customers and the attendees for TPE. And right now, we put a lot of cigars in 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 the tobacco shops and very great very, so very, very good very so good. you had a good reception i i i, I walked past I, I talked to you for a while i walked past your booth numerous times you were you you were one of 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 the of the uh, booths that i saw you guys you were writing orders you were doing good so this is a a brand that is is growing I think that people, if you haven't experienced Casa 1910, I think you need to go out there and experience this brand. Um, how many, at this point, based on TPE and where you're currently at, how many shops in the United States would you say you're in right now? For this TPE and now? Yeah. Whoa. Really, 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 I don't have I, I, I don't have the number <laughs> uh, with me. And right now uh, I am in uh, in California, visit uh, a lot of, of tobacco shops. Um, just uh, last night I have a very special event with my buddies from Stoogies Gold Country from uh, Jameson and the Thursday. I have a very special event in Lodi, California, with leftists and all. I visit other other uh, tobacco shops, and some some ones they have not our tobaccos, and other ones don't have in a certain our tobaccos yet. But it, it's very important. Um, but in this time. Very not a lot of tobacco shop owners. It's going to TPE, but they know for us uh, for TPE or for PCA. It's 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 important to be there because yes. if the if the owner don't go to the tobacco, uh, maybe a customer or maybe the the bartender or or the manager goes to the to the trade show 
and see our product and see the new references or, or see the new stuff for, for other companies. And right now, I, I, I don't have a, 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 the number, the proper number for, for okay. this time, but it's worth it. Definitely, right. it's worth it. So I'll say this, that uh, next week on, so every Saturday, except I've been kind of laxed a little because I've been traveling a lot. Um, usually on Saturday at one o'clock, I always do the, what I call the wheel of wonderfulness. And those of you that are following me, you know, I haven't done a wheel of wonderfulness in a while. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, but we're going to have one next week and it's going to drive uh the wheel is going to include everybody that's loved, liked, or shared the last three shows that we had. And one of the prizes that's going to be on that is Casa 1910 product. So um, somebody's going to win some Casa 1910 product that you're going to get. And I hope you, when you get it, you appreciate it. And when you, and, and if you do let people know, okay, because this brand has got some special stuff, okay? It really, really yeah. have some special cigars. Um, I, I, I love the first, the first line you came out with. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this. I mean, I am now at. We, I started this show at eight o'clock. We are sitting at ten o'clock, almost ten o'clock. I'm still smoking this cigar, okay, and. I'm just enjoying these flavors as it goes through. Um, I'm not going to comment on on burn because I've got wind blowing around me. It is not my normal <laughs> review process, but I'm going to tell you that I'm really, really enjoying this cigar. So kudos to you for what you've been doing. Um, you are absolutely blending phenomenal cigars, and I hope people really pay attention to Casa 1910. Um, Let's come back to you, the person. Um, you talked about you're a lawyer. All right. My daughter's a lawyer. What is your specialty in law? Well, uh, my, I'm from Jalisco, and the special stuff in Jalisco is uh, uh, how, how, no, I don't know how you say, but the panel. For the jail people. <laughs> okay. So you do bail and all you're helping people that are you a defense attorney? Yes. Defense. So you're defending people that get arrested, not prosecuting. Well, uh, my proper preparation is for that people in jail have a, a just and great. Um, process, right? You Legal you're process. representing you're representing the convicted to try to help them fight their case. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My daughter, she's a business attorney, so she deals with other stuff like managing <laughs> contracts and shit like that. So, but I, that's an admirable field because that's a tough field because that that that's in, in a law field. That's one where you are taking the you're, you're taking the side of the convicted and trying to defend the convicted that they maybe people didn't follow the right rules of law when they convicted them. Right. Yes. That's that's an admirable field. And it's a tough. I'm sure that's a very tough field to be in. Yes. And w when I study and. Um, in in these days, uh, I was have a, a, an uncle. Uh, my uncle was a, a attorney like this, and she talked me with me, and he says, "I see you like and you love the spirits, the cigars, and you talk with the people around it and about it." And I see you, and I see happiness, and I, I I see you. You are very happy to share with the people a good drink and good that. And 
he says to me, you need to, to look in the happiness in your life, uh, no other stuff. You need to look in the happiness and share that kind of happiness. And um, I take their word because they say they say to me, mm. if you like this 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 uh, this road, prepare yourself. Right. Be the best. Uh, take the certification, but not stop with, with you take the certification because the certification is just a paper. It's just a piece of paper. You need to make a proper stairs. You need to, to you need to go to the roots, to the to the to to the roots for everything. If you like tequila, go to go, go for tequila Jalisco and see and research and asking the process, the important things around the tequilas. And if you like the tobacco, go and and he support me a lot around that. And it's because I'm here right now for him. Uh, right, no, uh, it's not with us, but I make every cigar in, in his name. Oh, very nice. Yes. So what is your, um, what is your favorite uh, music that you like to listen to? Well, for for me, the music is like a cigar uh, because depend the moment, depend the environment, depend the, my feelings. Um, but maybe I'm listening three three different genders in in my YouTube or in my Spotify playlist. Uh, first of all, rock and roll. I love you already. <laughs> uh, rock and roll since 80s. Um, I love Led Zeppelin. I love oh, the... Greatest. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. All right. <laughs> the, the best Led Zeppelin song in your mind. I'll tell you mine. You tell me yours. Wow. <laughs> I love everything from, from Led Zeppelin. Oh, mm -hmm. let me choose one. What's yours? <laughs> Mine is the Lemon Song. Okay. okay. I still think, and, and we're going to keep this uh, as, as PG rated as possible, but... The Lemon Song is the best song ever put out by Led Zeppelin or any other group to make love to. <laughs> you know. The Lemon Song. That is just, to me, is just a grooving song that takes you through is amazing crescendos and comes down and comes back up and just... It is so beautiful. I just love that song. I mean, there's a lot of songs I love from Les Zeppelin. They're, they're one of my most favorite bands. But that song is just, it hits me right in the core. Right here. What? For me, the you know, best Squeeze your lemons until the juice run, run, runs down my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my, my my best choice for uh, Led Zeppelin in this month or in this year for 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 today. Mm, Days and confused. Oh, Days and confused. Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful blues song. Absolutely fantastic now, song. Now maybe tomorrow I change my opinion, but but today it's Days and confused. Yeah. Yeah, no, Days and Confused is a, a phenomenal song. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to take that away from you at all. Um, where are you on movies, man? What kind of movies do you like to watch? Well, I love the spies, the, the spy stuff. Uh, like... Uh, <clears throat> 
Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, James Bond. Uh, James Bond, uh, man. You can't go wrong with James Bond. <laughs> yes, uh, James Bond. Um, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite Bond character? Oh, the 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 last one. Oh, you 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 like the new Bond? Yes. The uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, uh, yeah, I, I gotta I, Forget the, the name. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the new Bond. I'm a Sean Connery guy. I, I, I thought okay. Sean Connery was the best Bond, but the new Bond is is gritty. He's a gritty Bond. All right. He's he's not the he's not as suave as a as a Sean Connery. All right. But he he he's got a whole nother dimension. So yeah, I I I I get it, and I like all the Bonds. Believe me, I'm I, I've I've watched all the Bond films, and and I'm a big Bond fan. But um, I think Sean Connery was the best Bond in in, in my book. But I, okay. I'm a little I'm a little older. So <laughs> you know. And Bond supremacy and uh, oh the, my lord, the books, the books and the movies. It's a very great stuff. Yeah. You do sci-fi? Yes. Who's your favorite sci-fi movie these days? Mm. <clears throat> Is this a, 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 a great question? Uh, I love this interview because it's a... <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting uh, uh, questions uh, because yeah, I'm just trying to know you, man. It's like what we do. This is what <laughs> I do. It's like you know, cigars. We know cigars. They people can learn about your cigars, and we talked about your cigars. But I want to know your where, where you're at, and 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 that's what's important. Well, r- right now, um, I love the artificial intelligence. Uh, movies for sci-fi uh maybe i don't know well the the proper i a it's a very interesting uh, movie the other one from a24 studio um with with a uh, android it's very okay. interesting in in the in middle of the forest uh i i don't remember the the name uh, the biographies, well, sorry, uh, about sci-fi. Yeah, uh, all about the artificial intelligence uh, from like that, uh, Matrix. And oh, the Matrix. Kinda. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, that, that, that's just a mind-blowing movie when you think about it because you never quite know what, where you're at, you know, in that movie. But uh, yes. artificial intelligence, um, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great topic because we're all dealing with like chat GPT now. And, and <laughs> I mean, where, where is this going to take us in the world? Right. I mean, the possibilities is very huge. Oh, it's huge. I mean, my, my daughter, my, my daughter, who's a lawyer, all right, like I mentioned, she, she, we were talking about that today and from a business perspective, the big problem with business and artificial intelligence is is is, is copyright, right? Who, who who owns who owns the copyright of something that if you push it through Chat GPT and you produce something, who owns the copyright? Who, who <laughs> legally who owns that? It it yes. becomes a it becomes a complicated problem as we go forward. And you know, I, I I'm an engineer by trade, so. Um, when, when I, you know, I, I deal with things like, you know, you know, um, I deal a lot with, uh, uh automated vehicles, right. Um, okay. uh, uh, aerospace and all, all crazy cool stuff. And you, you just start thinking about where we're going with that and how AI feeds into that and how that's going to create new designs over time in, tw- in 10, 20 years from now. Um, it becomes a it becomes an issue because are we engineers going to be put out of a job? <laughs> right? 
and do you lawyers have to protect the AI? Right? Exactly. It is <laughs> huge. So, it's huge. <laughs> you like art? Oh, yes. What's your favorite art? What's your favorite art? Well, most recently, really, really, I love the Pollock stuff because yeah. it's a lot of mess, but beautiful mess. You know, it's it's beautiful, and and I connect with 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 this kind of of art for for Pollock and. Well, we 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 make a I make a lot of research uh, in a Mexican artist right now, and we have a several ones. They uh, she makes actually women makes a very great stuff, and I have a, a one one friend of mine. It's a very interesting uh, artist. It's called Neon Caron. You can you can look in uh, you can find it uh, in Instagram like a neon caron or in website. And uh, it's very interesting because the, uh, he makes a lot of pop art, but he has a very special application for your phone, and all of uh, his stuff takes life in, in the with the with the with the app in 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 their phone and you can see how how make maybe in a paint for Popeye the the sailor you can see how to talk you uh, the Popeye it's very cool it's very very cool but this kind of of new stuff with between um technology and the old way to make a proper art, it's very, very great for me. It's, I see a proper evolution between the technology and, and, the, and the art in a very beautiful bridge between them. It's very great. Neon Caron make very great stuff. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm a, uh, as, as I've evolved over my life, I've actually, come to really appreciate um good street art okay mm -hmm. i mean um i'd have to say that like drew estates um uh got me into looking at street art and um i was uh, a couple of years ago i was at the art basil um uh, art fair down in miami and um there was tremendous artists but then Drew Estate who did a whole thing with their street artists that they, they featured. And I bought actually some of their art, you know, because I thought it was phenomenal. And everywhere I go now, like I was just recently in Lisbon, Portugal on vacation and I'm walking around and there's, you know, you know, there's street art, you know, Europe has a lot of graffiti on buildings and it's crappy mm -hmm. graffiti. I mean, it's just crap, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I was walking around and I said, there's got to be really good street art somewhere in this city, right? It can't just be this garbage. And I came across um, where the vernacular is, you know, the, 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 the little trolley car. And the trolley car was done up beautifully with street art. And there was this area where this, at the top of the, uh, the top where the tram starts, there were these platforms. And it was... It was commissioned street art by Lisbon, and they had panels of this beautiful art that I took pictures of, just absolutely beautiful street art, beautiful graffiti. And you get good graffiti, it's artistic. You get crappy graffiti, it's like it's just it's just garbage, you know. It's it just it's just des desecrating buildings. But the good street art is like wow that's pretty phenomenal and yes. i have to I, I i look at that and to me i've really starting to get into that and i'm buying i've been buying 
you know, street art, you know, I, I, I find stuff, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to buy this, you know, just, this is cool. You know? Great. You never know, you know, maybe, you know, 20 years from now, you know, the, you know that, that could be the big thing. Right. So, but all right. So we've, uh, we, we've gone by well bond beyond our hour, um, <laughs> two hours now since my show started. Um, <laughs> It has been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, those that are watching and those that are haven't watched yet, that tune in. Um, Casa 1910, you need to check this brand out. Um, they have got a really fine selection of cigars. Um, I'll ask you one more question. You came out with some new stuff now. Um this is going to continue through PCA. Do you have anything new coming out or are you basically sticking with this line now through 2023 and 2024 is going to be some new stuff? <clears throat> of course. Well, right now we have eight different cigars between three lines. We take the proper colors for, for the Mexican flag, but in Mexico, we cannot uh, use the proper colors, the green, the white, and the, and the red, uh, we cannot use uh, it because it's prohibited. Ah, interesting. And it's, it's because we use orange and not the red. Right. Uh, about that, we have three lines. The green one, it's Cabri Edition. Cabri Edition made in Nicaragua with Nicaraguan tobaccos and Mexican tobaccos. It's a very great blend, three different cigars. And we call it Cabri Edition because the name for each cigar is a name for the Mexican revolutionary horse from Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata. And it's a, the, the flavor profile, it's more strength, minerals, spiciness, and letters, okay? The, um, the white one, the new line, is the Soldadera Edition. Soldadera is the name for the female warriors in the Mexican Revolution. For example, La Coronela, she was the first coronel, the properly and officially uh, fierce women um, recognized like the, the level for the coronel in Mexico. And it's, it's a little tribute for each very important women in, in the Mexican Revolution, okay? Uh, I made these cigars in Dominican Republic with Dominican tobaccos and Mexican tobaccos inside. For example, La, La Coronela, I smoke La Coronela. It's a beautiful, majestuoso shape. It's 58 for ring gauge and five and a half inch for length. Medium to full strength cigar. And I made this cigar with a Bano Ecuador for the wrapper, Brazilian Arapiraca in the binder, and in the filler, Mexican tobacco and Dominican tobacco inside. Uh, it's it's an, an example for Soldadera Edition, the new line. Um, the, the orange label, it's two cigars, uh, the Robusto and the Tierra Blanca. Made in Mexico with 100% handmade, 100% made with Mexican tobaccos, and made for a special uh, pairing for tequilas, okay? And uh, right now we have the eight difference between the three lines. Right now in PCA, you can see a new special release in the PCA. Uh, it's a very special collaboration between other master blender and I, of course. And we take a very special tobaccos in a beautiful, beautiful format and a beautiful Vitola. Uh, but very limited production, very limited edition. One shot, one okay. shot. And, and we have uh, two other ones, very special productions, uh, but these cigars we release for you guys in the Casa 1910 experience. Casa 1910 experience, it's a very special event every year in the 20th of November because 20th of November, it's a proper and official date for the Mexican Revolution began. And uh, we make a very special weekend to Friday to Sunday in Mexico City 
with a lot of experience, cultural, gastronomic, and uh, drinks, beverage, booze, <laughs> a lot of Mexican drinks uh, with different agaves and different places uh, like uh, tequilas, mezcales, and sotoles, and other kind. And other, and other uh, spirits, of course, will have whiskeys and, and interesting. So this is rocks. on November 20th. November 20th. Yes. So I might have to find my way down there. <laughs> you need to come because uh, this is a very special event for the 50 best accounts for, for U.S. and other special accounts in, in Europe and uh, very close friends for the brand. And we show you, uh, for the people in, in the Casa Nights and Experience, the next releases for the next year. Okay. Uh, before, before we show it officially in the, in the trade shows. Uh, it's because we show uh, the, other, the other launches in, in the Casa Nights and Experience. Um, the, the people, if, if, if the people like to come to the Casa Nights and Experience, Maybe you can send to us uh, your information because it's just with invitation for, for this event. Sure. And, sure. but uh, for all, all your audience, maybe you can win a special invitation for the 1910 experience because in the Cinco de Mayo, we have an, a lot of, of events in the tobacco shops in the US. And if you go, and take our cigar and put it in your Instagram and tag the, the tobacco shop and tag us. Uh, we have a several uh, a very great uh, gifts for you guys. Maybe you can win cigars, maybe you can win swag, but the most important gift is a total full invitation for the uh, 1910 experience. It's very great uh, stuff. Uh, no. If you if you don't know how happens in 1910 experience, go to the channel YouTube channel for Casa 1910 Casa 1910 cigars in YouTube, and you can see the the video about Casa 1910 experience. It's a very very great uh, event, and you need to come because it's very very great stuff. <laughs> there we go, beautiful. Well, thank you very much for taking your time. Um, I'm sorry we had a little cross on time, but we got the show in. It's important. Uh, the, thank you very much. Um, I'll give you the last word. No, th thank you for, for the invitation, Jimmy. This is a very, very important space for, for us, for Casa 1910 team, uh, because uh, every time when... I can take the, the word and I make a good speech, not just about the old tobaccos, uh, it's about 1910 and, and make a proper presentation for, for the people who don't know us uh, yet. Uh, it's very important. And my invitation for you guys is try different things for different places, for different countries, different blends, Please don't stay in the same cigar ever. Right. You need to taste all flavors for our aromas, for different production styles. And because in the, in the, uh, in the changes, it's very beautiful to discover new things, new things. Uh, so, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me and the invitation. I'm very glad to, to hear right now with you. And if you need more information about Casa 1910, please send us a message for 1910 Cigars in Facebook, Instagram, uh, and other platforms. Or, or maybe at info at casa1910.com. <clears throat> you can send all, all questions and try Casa 1910 cigars. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, so that's our show today. Uh, next week, uh, we will have uh, Diab 
Elan on, and the week after we're going to have Joe Grow from uh, Quality Importers on. So um, thank you for joining us, and thank you, Manalo, for your time, and uh, I'll be reaching out to you anyway. We'll be talking some more. So thank you very much. Thank you.